David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you something which is rather unique, and I enjoy unique pens. I like things that are unlike anything else in my collection, and the pen I have for you today utilizes a material that I really wasn't aware of that can be used in this manner. Um, it's also from a brand I've yet to review. Uh, that brand would be Griffos, and the pen I have for you today is their Nero Muse Salmon model. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of the Griffos Nero Muse, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at the U.S. distributor for Griffos for providing this pen on loan for review. Uh, Griffos is an Italian brand that has been making pens for more than 25 years. Uh, they're based in the Acosta Valley region of northern Italy. It's near the French and Swiss borders and only about a 45 minute drive to the famed Mont Blanc and about an hour away from the Matterhorn. Uh, it looks like a really beautiful part of the country. Uh, this company specializes in working with gold and silver and other unique materials to create their writing instruments. Uh, they do a lot of guilloche work on their pens as well. Uh, speaking of pens, it arrives in this box. It has the Griffos Company logo on it, which has two griffins surrounding a nib. Now, the story behind this logo and the company name is interesting. Many of Griffos' designs are inspired by art and history and nature and science. Uh, Griffos is the medieval Latin word for griffins. When he was young, the owner of Griffos, Maurizio Stura, was part of a student group who visited a church which had been built over a Roman temple in 1003 AD. Uh, there was some archaeological work being done to unearth the original temple. While there, the group saw some recently unearthed mosaics which hadn't been seen since the Middle Ages. And what were on those mosaics? To Griffin. The image stuck with him and was the inspiration behind the nib and the logo. I like logos with interesting stories like that behind them. And then inside the box, we have a pen. This is the Griffos Salmon Fountain Pen. Um, it is called that because it utilizes salmon leather here on the cap. Uh, the company makes a number of pens with exotic leathers like alligator and shark and stingray and ostrich. Um, this pen is available in a number of different colors. There is like a red and a gold and a white and a gray and a black and then a few different shades of blue. And then the one I have here with me today is one of the darker blue models. Um, this is an interesting combination of materials. Uh, there is the salmon leather on the cap and the rest of the pen is sterling silver. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the distinguishing feature of this pen, which is the salmon leather. It's a very interesting material. Uh, the scales are removed and the underlying skin is then carefully treated in order to make this unique leather. What you're seeing here is not the scales, but where the scales used to be, I believe. Um, the silver you see is not part of the natural material. It's been added as an interesting accent and really gives the material a bit more depth. It is very soft. Uh, the company states this leather has been sustainably sourced from farm-raised fish and is the byproduct of food production. Uh, the company also states that this material is very durable, but um, you know, I'd like to see how it wears over time uh, with all of the little edges and ridges here. I'm uncertain how years of heavy use would affect this pen. Uh, like any leather, though, there is the potential it could become stained, so you would need to be very careful when inking. I'm thinking that if you get ink on this here, that that just might become a permanent addition to your pen. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is rounded and then transitions into the clip. Um, I think the design of the clip looks nice here in relation to the overall look of the pen, but I do find it to be a bit difficult to use. I'm not quite sure what it is. It doesn't feel overly stiff. Um, I think it's more of the underlying leather. It almost wants to grip material rather than let it slide through the clip, which brings me back to how this pen will wear over time. Uh, the area under the clip where the material would be sliding in and out uh, might be an area of increased wear over time. The cap angles up slightly before reaching the band. On one side of the band, it is engraved with the name of the pen, the Nero Muse, as well as Italy, where this pen is manufactured. 
Uh, on the back, it has the image of a griffin. Uh, the band has an angled transition, which reduces the step down to the barrel, which is straight for a bit before tapering down to a slightly bulbous end. Uh, the barrel has a nice repeating guilloche pattern. Um, all of this exterior metal on the pen is sterling silver. With silver, you will find that it will tarnish. Um, I have some silver pens in my collection where the silver really patinas very nicely, giving it a bit of an aged and darker look. I found the silver on this pen to tarnish in kind of more of the blotchy way that you'll want to polish out in order to maintain the looks of the pen. The cap twists off with one and a half rotations, and underneath we have a number six stainless steel Bach nib engraved with the company logo. It's available in extra fine, fine, medium, as well as broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, the section is straight. It begins with a raised ring and continues until a stair-step transition into the remainder of the barrel. Um, I do like that they have the guilloche pattern on the section. Um, it really prevents this metal section from being slick and provides an interesting tactile feeling while gripping the pen. Uh, while this barrel is sterling silver, I don't find it to be overly heavy. Uh, it's lighter than I thought it would be. This cap does post and it does snap to post, which is a good thing. With the metal cap and the metal barrel, you wouldn't want that metal on metal contact, which would significantly damage the barrel over time. Um, I do find the edge of the band to be a little bit on the sharp side. So it is a little uncomfortable when rubbing up against the inside of my hand. And I also find that posting this metal cap backweights the pen a bit and throws off the balance. Uh, it's not too bad, but just enough that I prefer this pen uh, unposted when I'm using it. Um, plus the guilloche kind of feels neat against your hand. The Griffos Nero Muse Salmon is available from the Griffos website. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. Uh, this pen retails for $275, and I don't feel that that's too bad for what you receive with this pen. You have an interesting and unique material in this salmon leather, and you have some very nice silver work on the rest of the pen as well. Uh, while this wouldn't be my first choice of a pen in this price range, if you are looking to fill out your collection with something out of the ordinary, this would be something to take a closer look at. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Griffoth Nero Muse Salmon. Uh, I wanted to give you a closer look at that. When I first saw that coloring on here, I thought it was like the underlying metal. No, but it's uh, actually a silver treatment that's on there. Uh, and it just has a bit of a, a ragged look to it. Uh, and it's very interesting. So uh, I am curious how that would wear over time, but I, I do give it uh, points for being a, a very unique and different look. In regard to some size comparisons, this is what it looks like with a Lamy All-Star. Here it is with a Twisby Eco. And then here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. Then here it is with a Platinum 3776 in the Chartres Blue. And a Montegrava Elmo. This is called the Chrysia Cola. And then finally here it is with a Diplomat arrow. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, um, here it is with the Platinum 3776, the Lamy All-Star, uh, as well as the Montegrappa Elmo. You know, I also want to give you a closer look at this guilloche work on here. You know, it's a little reflective here, but um, it's just very nice. And that I just like the looks of it. Uh, and it provides an interesting uh, tactile feeling on the hand. In regard to the writing sample, we have the Griffos. And this is the Nero Muse. And this is the salmon. This is a fine stainless steel nib. 
And since this pen has a bit of an aquatic theme, I thought I would use an aquatic ink, and that is from a company by the name of Andrillium, which is A-N-D-E-R-I-L-L-I-U-M. And the ink is Flapjack Octopus Orange. This is what the ink looks like. It's a really solid orange. Um, this is what it looks like in regard to a couple of my other favorite oranges, which are Ackermann's Orange Boven, uh, as well as the Leonardo Arancio Tarocco. This is what the bottle looks like. Um, you know, I've had these inks for a while. I really need to get around to doing a review of them uh, because they are nice inks. Uh, and so you might be seeing something uh, on a, a number of these inks in the fairly near future. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I will say that this is a, a decent fine nib. I'm usually not a huge fan of fine nibs, but I find this one to be pleasant. It doesn't have a lot of line variation on here, um, but I do find it to not be overly sharp, um, but it does have a fair amount of feedback to it in regard to reverse writing. It's not overly sharp, but it does lay down an extra, extra fine line in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Griffos Nero Muse Salmon. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I kind of like pens that are a little bit different and unique and just, you know, outside of what I have in my collection. Uh, and this is definitely is a pen that fits into that range. So it's well worth taking a look at. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.